Well, with me in the studio now is Janka Ortel, China expert at the German Marshall Fund. Good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Um, as we saw there, Hong Kong is clearly a threat to Beijing's authority. Um, is Beijing going to wait it out, or could the leaders in Beijing, President Xi, risk a Tiananmen-style military crackdown? As you can see, over the past couple of months now, they've been waiting for this to end. They've been waiting for this to stop um, on like a natural, on natural terms to peter out. What we haven't seen is like a clear movement. There have been signaling from Beijing's side that they could intervene whenever they wanted to with the People's Arms Police or with troops. But um, it does not seem very likely because there's not much to gain. Also, I think we have a problem if we um, focus on that too much because now anything below that level seems like a good outcome for us. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if in the West, if we think about just the military intervention as being key, um, as being like the, that's the red line not to cross, then that's a pretty low bar for the Chinese government not to. Okay, not to and they will no doubt take that into consideration. As they did today, uh, what they were displaying in Beijing, Beijing, one of the things we saw there is a new generation of military technology, the hypersonic nuclear capable missile out there. It wasn't alone, it, it, in, it wasn't the only thing we saw. Is Beijing close to stealing America's competitive edge militarily? I think what Beijing has demonstrated today is that it is going to be more deadly to attack uh, China in any kind of form, and it's going to be much more fierce in retaliation. Mm -hmm. So um, the competitive edge is not, they're not on equal terms yet, but there are pockets of excellence in which China has achieved near equal status um, to American military capabilities, especially in the hypersonic field, mm -hmm. for example, um, AI, we're talking about a lot of those, the drone technologies, mm -hmm. for example. So there are pockets of excellence in which it means that um, it is definitely harder to beat China in a military confrontation. How does this fact into the South China Seas. We're all looking at that right now. It's not just the United States, the Philippines, Vietnam, a lot of regional players. Does this military uh, progress that China has made mean that that region now belongs to China? Well, we haven't seen anything to the contrary in the latest, except for the freedom of navigation operations who have been a show of force of some sort um, by the US and other Western powers. We have not seen much um, of a competition about the dominance in that, in that region anymore. This is basically China's territory. Okay, President Trump in the US, well, he wants to turn that around. He wants to slow China's rise with the tariffs, with uh, better protections for intellectual property. Is there support for this ring-fencing China strategy here in Berlin. Well, there's definitely a support on the on the um, like the analysis of the problem that we're facing, China's um, current economic posture, um, its assertiveness in the region. This is definitely something that is not um, something that is appreciated in, in in Berlin and in Europe more broadly. But there is not an agreement on the ends that are approached. Um, in, in, in the way in which uh, the Trump administration is approaching um, China at the moment, Berlin certainly doesn't want to get in between. Um, Washington and Beijing, its security provider and its most important economic partner. Okay, so there's big economic reasons to stay uh, on the fence right now for Berlin. Uh, over the last few years, there's been a, a growing realization that prosperity did not bring China the democracy and freedom that we hoped for when it entered the WTO in 2001. Um, how should the West respond when we look at Hong Kong, for example? I think it is interesting to see that the West is not responding really at the moment. Um, it's awfully quiet around Hong Kong, except, except for in Washington, one has to say. In Europe, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of um, yeah, voices that are heard. When Chancellor Merkel traveled to, um, to China um, just recently, um, there wasn't a lot of criticism on this. So this shows that there is not a lot of leverage left. Um, so Europe needs to grow stronger and needs to act more forcefully uh, and more in, a, yeah, in, in closer coordination with the United States on these issues if it wants to have a voice in this. Something that may prove difficult for Berlin and Brussels, no doubt. Definitely will. Um, I mean, this is def it's hard to side with the Trump administration at this point in time if you're based in Berlin. Janka Ortel, China expert at the German Marshall Fund, thank you so very much for coming in. Thank you.